Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Kiley with Fly Skins. Uh, tonight I'm going to show you how to make a frog pattern. Pretty easy. I've been showing this a lot on the social media sites lately, Facebook and uh, Instagram, and now YouTube. That way you can uh, make one yourself. Alright, so the platform for this frog is going to be this uh, Arex Predator Hook. It's a 4 -aught. It's a pretty nice hook here. Um, pretty long shank that helps uh, accommodate the frog body, the foam part. And what I use is these cutters, these foam cutters uh, that sold through Hairline or your local uh, fly shop. They can get those from Hairline. And then I went ahead and pre-cut some foam. So I'm just use white foam here. I got a 4 mil and a 2 mil. 4 mil is going to go on top, 2 mil on the bottom. I'm not going to use it the way that it's normally used. Uh, I'm going to cut off this tab that normally you'd fold over and then affix it to the hook. So first things first, I'm just going to cut the tab off. I don't need those for this. Alright, I just got some Vivas thread, just the 240 here. And I'm mainly just using this so that the foam has something to stick to. So I'm going to build the base up. Pretty good, doesn't have to be pretty, doesn't have to be touching threads. I think uh, the coarser it looks, the better it sticks to the foam. All those grooves. So I'm just going to go back and forth here until I can't see the shank of the hook anymore. And that's pretty good thread base. I haven't had any issues slipping around or anything. I have in the past um, tied foam flies similar like bait fish and whatnot and I'll take a piece of mono and I'll just tie loops on both sides kinda like those crimped hooks that are made for foam bugs and that has helped uh, so far I haven't needed it on this particular fly and I think you'll understand why it's because the exoskin that goes around it is actually also around the hook, like the hook pierces through it, so it holds it in place really well. Alright. So I've got a really good thread base here. As you can see. Now I'll take some super glue. I'm going to put some super glue just on the bottom here. And I'm going to take the thinner foam, 2 mil. You can do this whatever way you like. Thickness foam, you can experiment with different uh, thicknesses. I'm just going to hold it in place until it's on there. Alright, so now that I have that on the bottom, the next stage is going to be glue your foam on top and sandwich them together. It's good if you don't go overkill on the super glue here because it's tends to stick better if you just use a thin amount. Less is more in this case. Just hold it until it adheres. Okay. So it's pretty much there. You can either glue your exoskin directly over this now or you can go through like I'm about to do and use a razor and kind of carve it and smooth it over and uh, give it a little more curve. Okay. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a double edged razor blade and I'm just going to go just round these corners off.
Okay. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I have a nice good flat spot where the eyes are going to sit. So I've got a little more of a extreme flat area there for that. And I'm going to take a lighter and I barely just skim by it and smooth it down. I did this with a the foam bait fish stick bait fly that I did a video of too. It can catch on fire there too, so make sure you're paying attention. You can kind of skip this part. I, I've done it both ways just to see what it would do and this just smooths it out a little bit. You really don't notice it that much. I'm just being a little picky. Alright, so what I've done is I've pre-cut some pieces of the exoskin that I have. Uh, I'm going to use brown and then the golden um, tan color for this particular one. You can also use the frog skin one that already has the yellow bottom and the green top or the olive and brown top. Um, and then you just have to buy one sheet of exoskin that has both colors on both sides. Um, but you can do any color combination. You can do the blue, the chartreuse, the chartreuse and black. I've used them all and so far so good. Uh, they look great and uh, they perform just as well as any other one. Okay, So for the bottom all you gotta do is kinda look at where you wanna line it up. You wanna make sure that the skin is gonna protrude beyond the eyelet. Okay, So take it out of the vise, line it up and make sure that it, when you pierce it through it goes in front of the eyelet and back a little bit beyond the hook bend that way you can do the leg portion okay so I do is stab it through place it back in the vise alright so next step so I'm going to take my super glue turn this upside down hold the skin out of the way and I'm going to put a thin coat of super glue along the body here on the bottom, just the bottom. I'm going to put a little on the eyelet there. You'll see why here in a little bit. I'll hold this. As soon as it touches, it's pretty much on there, so make sure you got it square before you put it on there. Alright. So there it is. There's that part. You hold it on there. And it's pretty much on there permanently. Try to take it back off, you'll ruin the skin. So measure once, measure twice, something like that, right? Make sure it's good to go. All right. So as you can see, it's stuck to the bottom there. That's the belly. What I can do next is I can go ahead and with my super glue, and I want to hit up any remaining foam that is left. And then after I get all the foam, the super glue, hit the eye, and I want to make one track of super glue just along the edge, and that is it, just along the edge of the foam, and in front of the eye, okay? Don't go too far back, because otherwise you won't be able to do your legs. It'll be stuck, okay? So it's got to be wet just around the edge and then all over the foam. And you lay the extra skin on top here. Same thing. Make sure you can cover the eye there. And you're going to slowly press and hold into place. And you'll see it stick to itself. Good rule of thumb, hold it for 10 seconds in each spot. You should be good to go. Okay. 
And if you've missed a spot for whatever reason, after you cut it, you can actually go back and take a toothpick with a little bit of super glue and hit that spot and rehold it. And you should be good to go. Alright. So I think I'm good to go now. Skin is adhered all the way around. You can kind of see it. I'm going to take my razor scissors and I'm going to cut and leave about an eighth inch of skin around the edge. I'm going to just follow the contour here. When I get to the back, I'm going to go and curve back out while I'm cutting I'm pulling away with the scissors that way it's a nice smooth continuous cut so you can see right there I'm going to do the same thing on the other side make sure you're aware of where the eyelet of the hook is when you're cutting this because uh, if you're using razor scissors if you accidentally hit that metal you could probably you could probably ruin your razor scissors Okay, you can go back and clean it up if you need to. I do this better holding it in my hand than on the vise. I'm just doing this for the demo so you can see what I've done here. Alright, so there you have that. I am going to take it out of the vise to do the leg part. All I'm going to do is swoop in and swoop out one continuous cut, and then that way I can uh, make where the legs are going to be glued with the silicone. I'll clean this up a little bit. Okay. So I want these. I'm going to make these round. So one thing you'll notice is the back part here. I didn't glue this far back, so that way I have this open section I can slide my silicone into to glue that into place too. So I've got basically the main body done. See how quick and easy that was? Alright, so for the legs, what I'm going to use, I like these uh, crazy legs. Hang on. The Loco Legs Pumpkin Color by Hairline Dubbin. This one pretty much matches perfectly with these two colors of exoskin. Um, pretty much figure out the width of the leg that you want. Separate it. And what I do is just cut this in half. Use the length um, that it is and it's perfect. Okay, so use all of it too. Alright, and then you save these tabs, and that helps out put it in the, in the back of the frog. The way that I like to do this, make sure that these are kind of open. If you can see that in the back, that helps before you glue it. Take a little drop of super glue, just a little bit, on both sides. Stick it in between. And then just hold it for a few seconds, and then it should be good. Other side. If you get like a weird, funky tab there, I usually just clean that up so it doesn't stick out the side of the back. A little bit of super glue. Not too much. Just a little bit of drop. If you do too much, what can happen is... Uh, It'll dry out the material and then it can break off easier. Okay. So, there you have it. That's pretty much it for the most part. Um, frog. Juicy frog there. Um, fish probably wouldn't care if you did any more than that. Um, but I'm going to soup this one up with a weed guard because I plan on throwing this in some weeds and lily pads and whatnot. And then I'm also going to throw some eyes on it. 
just because I like the way it looks and um, plus this one the way this uh, frog pattern acts is it, it'll dive and it'll kind of wobble up so you get a lot of action and if you have any imperfections maybe you folded the skin more on one side when you glued it um, it'll actually cause it to dive left right whatever and that's kind of cool too it gives a little more irregular action which isn't necessarily a bad thing all right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the weed guard. I have a poker here. You can use your bodkin. All I'm going to do is heat this thing up. And it's going to pierce through the exoskin and the foam. It's going to create a nice little hole. Really quick too. And then I do the same thing for the eyelet. When I tie this fly onto my line, my tippet, I use the uh, perfection loop knot. And that way um, you've actually disguised the hook a little bit more too because you've glued over it, which is kind of cool to be honest with you. All right. So now I've got my hole for my line. I've got the two holes for the weed guard. I'm going to use 30 pound mono for this. 30 pound mono is pretty much what I use most of the time for weed guards. Alright. Keep them long. A little drop of super glue here. That's all you need. Line it up with the hole and stick it in there. I'll leave it long and then you can maneuver it so it's displaced evenly where it'll fall over the hook. A little bit of super glue. Cool part is if these weed guards get messed up, you can pop them out and replace them pretty easily. And those will stay put. I'm gonna leave those long for right now till it cures, and I can do something else. Uh, one thing I can do now is I can put on my eyes. I'm gonna actually gonna use these Deer Creek eyes. I really like the Deer Creek logo ones. I can find them in my drawer here. All right. I think I used them all on my other frogs. No big deal. I'm gonna use some of these Jurassic ones. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a toothpick. Put a drop of super glue on the toothpick first. Place it where I want. There's a flat spot right here where I intended on them going when I first curved the foam. Put these in place. Push and hold for 10 seconds. One thing I noticed this is pretty cool because it's a teaching moment here. There's a little bit of gap where the super glue, um, I didn't get it or whatever when I first did it. So all I got to do is take a little bitty drop and shove it between there and then hold it together. And it's pretty much instant. It went together. Okay. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim these weed guards to basically just above the hook there. And then if you want to, one last step, this is kind of something I do just to make flies more durable. Not that this isn't already pretty much bomb proof, is I'll use some 5 minute epoxy, mix it up. And I'll put some over the eyes and just a little bitty drop 
on each weed guard. I'm not sure that it's totally necessary. I've just been doing it. Maybe just have it, I guess. Making sure this stuff, these last a long time, especially with the big crazy blow-ups you're going to get on a frog pattern to begin with. Not to mention throwing them and ripping them through weeds and uh, just take a little more of a beating. So I've mixed up some, I'm just using some Devcon epoxy. Mix up a little bitty batch. Take a little bit. Make sure that when you put it on the eye or around the eye, you get just a little bitty border and that'll help uh, adhere it to the exoskin. And if you use the five minute, you don't really need to put it on a dryer because you're not coating the entire thing and if you leave it upright it would be fine. This stuff cures very quickly so and the heat doesn't affect the exoskin or anything either so but it seems to bond really well to it. Now if there was a lot of stretching going on or something like that that I was planning on happening in this particular area um, it wouldn't wouldn't the, the exoskin would actually pull away from the epoxy but since it's just the eye and I'm not expecting that to happen it'll be just fine alright little drop around here each of these should be good okay and there's your frog. You can rip through some weeds. It's pretty awesome. 